we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Evolution. Brace yourselves, here we go! I'm sorry to put you through this, but hey, if I had to watch it, then, well, you all need to sit here and endure this pain with me. Something's wrong. Let's start from the beginning. The year was around 2008. A young Chris has been a huge Dragon Ball fan all of his life, and all he ever wanted in life was to have a live action adaptation of the anime series. And then the rumor mill started. That's right, people were claiming that the possibility of a live action movie was in the works. I was losing it. I can't tell you just how excited I was. Young Chris, who was still full of hope and joy in this world, was about to face a crushing reality and his life was never going to be the same. I went online every single day to find any new information I could and finally, it was looking to be real. We had a cast of actors assigned to the roles and a website dedicated to leaked footage on behind the scenes stuff as the movie was being made. Well, let me tell you, early leaked footage did not look good. Okay, can we stop please? I remained optimistic. I told myself it was behind the scenes, nothing to worry about. The CGI was unfinished, no color grading. Let's not be too quick to judge. We saw Master Roshi, but he had hair. And then we got to see Bulma, who didn't have blue hair. But thank goodness, they gave her a blue streak. Otherwise, we would have never known it was Bulma. Look on the bright side. Either way, you can find out fast because you're fueled up and ready to go. And Goku. Okay, despite the obvious lack of working out and honestly not blaming the actor for this, they obviously didn't give him enough time to properly train for the role. But you know what? I'm going to give a compliment here. I think they actually accomplished something here with the hair. Goku has impossible hair to copy and overall they did a decent job with it i mean i would have liked something more but this isn't terrible you really can't let that go huh lord beerus so can we take a moment just to appreciate the opening sequence whoa yeah, that's right. They started the movie with the most lazy narration I've seen in a movie. The moment you see it, you know you are watching a low budget B movie. Also, it made no sense. The opening sequence says that Piccolo created the Ozaru and it took these old wise men creating the Mafuba who sealed Piccolo away and by doing so it prevented Ozaru from ever being seen again. Okay, the movie just started and it already doesn't make any sense. <laughs> As we all know, Saiyans can turn into Ozaru due to a full moon. We see this countless times. Though the opening sequence says Piccolo's disciple Ozaru wrecked havoc on Earth thousands of years ago. And once they finally captured Piccolo in the Mafuba, Ozaru just disappeared. So who was this Ozaru exactly? They are claiming there was a Saiyan on Earth before Goku ever got there and Piccolo controlled him? What? I'm sorry, we are this deep into the video and we are still on just the opening sequence. Okay, we finally get some real footage and we open with Goku with some CGI sweating and the most obvious green screen sequence ever. We see Goku standing on some clotheslines and Grandpa Gohan with a full head of hair and a chin strap. This is what Grandpa Gohan actually looks like, by the way. Oh, but it gets so much better. Strap in. Are you ready for the greatest fight sequence of your life? Yeah, we are not even four minutes into this movie and it's already a dumpster fire. But truthfully, can we take a moment to appreciate that kick? I just love everything about it. The physics of it make no sense. The placement of his foot pointing directly upward as he moves towards Grandpa Gohan. Honestly, you know what? This might be the greatest movie of all time. Goku talks to Gohan and you know what, let me just show you. Then teach me something I can use. Teach me, teach me how to get the girl. Teach me how to talk to her without stumbling all over everything I say. Yeah, Goku is obsessed with girls. We have a teenage boy on our hands here. Oh, just one small problem. I'm a girl, silly, that's why. A girl? Oh, so that's what you are. Yeah, 
Goku doesn't know a thing about females. And that's also a part of the running joke of the franchise is how dumb Goku is and not understanding the difference at all. Even in Dragon Ball Super, a grown adult with children of his own, he thinks the idea of kissing is gross. Whoa, what was that Trunks? You put your mouth on hers, that's so weird. Kakarot, you've never kissed someone? Huh? No, of course not, why? You're married and have children. Yeah, duh, but what's that have to do with kissing? You... Oh, no way. So Goku learns about the Dragon Balls from Gohan, and after learning about how incredible these balls are, he doesn't even really care. The balls are inert. Now, Goku is on his way to high... school? You know what really lets me know I'm watching Dragon Ball? That's right, high school. Nothing says Dragon Ball like Goku going to high school. Make me pay Giko. So Goku's being bullied because... Can I order a medium ice cap with almond milk? Yep. Thank you. I don't know. So we meet Piccolo and Mai. Oh, and fun fact, if you didn't know, originally they didn't even want to make Piccolo green. They wanted to make him a more brownish color because they didn't feel green looks real enough. It just confirms just how out of touch they were with the source material. <laughs> you are supposed to be making a movie about fantastical characters who can do supernatural things, but you are worried about Piccolo not looking real enough. We move on to our next fight scene, as we are introduced to Chi Chi, who invites Goku to a party. Beauty awaits. His bullies show up and we get the stereotypical bully scene, as Goku says he promised he wouldn't fight. I made a promise that I wasn't gonna fight. Let me take a moment to acknowledge that this is literally the opposite of something Goku would actually say. He loves to fight. He lives for it. That is his entire character. Can we also just appreciate how the last bully comes out, grabs a metal object, and actually tries to kill Goku here. They are at a high school party, and this guy just straight up trying to murder him. Yeah, it was obviously just an act, or at least I think it was. <laughs> so we finally get back to some actual Dragon Ball related stuff, and we have Piccolo show up with Mai to Grandpa Gohan's house, and they kill Grandpa Gohan. Goku finds Gohan dying and he lets him know he has to find the Dragon Balls and to find Master Roshi. Coincidentally, Bulma... Wait, is that Bulma? Somebody stole my Prometheum orb. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's Bulma. I, I can see the blue strand of hair. Bulma and Goku head toward Master Roshi's. So they are in this city, which I'm guessing is supposed to be either East or West City, but no mention of that at all. And we get Goku eating a huge leg of a chicken. <sighs> okay, listen, I get what they were trying to do here. Goku eats a ton of food. And so I get it. In the anime, Goku would do stuff like this. But because the rest of this movie is trying to seem more grounded and real, it just completely falls apart and looks ridiculous. Feed that tongue tongue. It's like they skipped over all the important elements of the characters and the story, but then throw ones in that just even further disconnect the characters from the world they created. <sighs> oh, also, Goku can't spell M A. S. M. 
A S. What? Goku wouldn't even begin to know how to do that. Why would this Goku know how to spell? So they find Master Roshi's house because Goku could sense him. He says, I could always sense my grandpa. I can always sense my grandfather. Except when you couldn't because you had no idea who the real Chi Chi was. So Master Roshi lives on an island in the middle of the city. <laughs> So Master Roshi thinks they are breaking in and they have a fight. I will say Master Roshi's shirt is pretty great. Well, we have the entire band together now. We have Roshi, Goku, Bulma. Oh, right. Yamcha. How could we ever forget about Yamcha? They fell into a hole due to Yamcha making a trap because he's a bandit and that's what bandits do. But the part I found most interesting is how Goku attempts to get out, but he can't. And then they sit around and have a bonfire in the hole while Yamcha sits at the top waiting for them to pay up to help them out. So after the bonfire, Roshi jumps out of the hole and says, we don't have time for this. You don't have time for this but you had time for a bonfire and it's now dark outside so looks like you did actually you had a lot of time we have no time to waste so in that same hole yamcha then breaks open another hole that leads them to an underground volcano also can we take a minute to shout out piccolo you know what he's done this entire movie nothing we are more than halfway through this film and Piccolo has been in about 10 minutes of it, and that's being generous. Most of that time, he's just been hovering in this flying ship thing. We all of a sudden jump to Roshi meeting his master, and then we are thrown into a clip of Chi-Chi fighting Mai. Yeah, Mai. You know the one who was fighting Goku just moments ago? In that same kind of volcano thing? <sighs> this makes no sense. Who wrote this? Also, Goku is watching and notices Mai, yet is acting as if he had no idea who she was. Then we jump again and Goku is training with Roshi. This movie has a habit of just jumping from scene to scene and nothing really flowing. Goku decides he's going to cheat because he can't learn air bending. Why they are doing air bending in a Dragon Ball movie, I don't even understand anymore. So with the power of teenage Goku liking girls, he masters the airbending thing and gets to kiss Chi Chi. I need a drink. We finally reach the final act of the film and oh, the hype. We get the big Goku reveal in his orange gi we all know and love. Yeah, it, it sucks. Goku acting all tough in his new shiny costume tells Piccolo he's going to stop him. I'm here to destroy you. And Piccolo explains that Goku is Ozaru. And then Goku starts transforming. And are you ready for some of the most horrendous CGI of the last decade? <laughs> How Piccolo even knows Goku is Ozaru? Yeah, none of this makes any sense. Who wrote this again? Goku for some reason transforms back to his human self, then has another garbage dump of a CGI fight with Piccolo. Wow, is it garbage. Where did that drink go? It's okay, we can get through this together. We are almost done. So Goku masters the Kamehameha, and let's just watch this together. There we have it. Piccolo is dead. It's finally over. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, Master Roshi died earlier trying to use the Mafuba, but seriously, who cares? Goku brings him back to life using the Dragon Balls anyway, and we get a scene of Shenron for the first time as well. And Shenron, for some reason, I guess is a baby dragon? He's so small. Anyway, Goku gets the girl and gets to have another makeout scene with Chi Chi. Oh, did you think this movie was done? Nope, Piccolo is still alive, so that means we are getting a sequel. <laughs>
Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. I honestly don't know what else to say about this movie. It was truly a slap in the face to all Dragon Ball fans and to everyone involved. You should be so ashamed of yourselves. It just astonishes me. Something as huge as Dragon Ball, it's one of the largest franchises on the freaking planet. It's like the director, writers, and everyone involved has never heard of this thing and said, screw it, get it done, who cares? Now, the writer did come out publicly and did apologize and said he dropped the Dragon Balls. The balls are inert. We need to make sure no one has to endure what we just endured. We need to make sure this movie never sees the light of day ever again. <sighs> we did it. This movie never has to be spoken of ever again. But what you should do is share it so that way we can get others to join in our misery. And if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I need to know your pain that you felt from this movie. Thank you so much. If you are still watching this, I put a ton of work into this video and I really wanted to do my best as this has been something I've wanted to share with everyone for so many years. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video.